let's look at this portion of scripture. Um, and it's very frightening. And it says, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face, he being Jesus, steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and send messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him. They did not receive him. This is Jesus. And they did not receive him. Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Look, look, let's, let's look at his disciples. Now, this is Jesus approaching the final moments um, of his earthly ministry. So this is after three years of teaching. Right? This is after three years of discipling that... Did he look and listen to what his disciples said? And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them. And this is my this is where I want to kind of focus our meditation on tonight. And said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now, I want to stop there. But I want to ask the question, do you know what spirit you are of? He asked his disciples, um, he, he told his, he rebuked his disciples and he said to them, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. That, that messed with me. It messed with me for many reasons. It messed with me because you can, it is quite possible to be walking with Jesus and still be walking and serving and worshiping and ministering with the wrong spirit. Uh, this is after his disciples heard all of his preaching. Um, you know, this is after his disciples heard all of his teachings. This is after all of the times that he he showed, you know, he, he did miracles that they were still operating from a contrary spirit. I, I find that baffling, you know, and um, what I want one of the things I want to look at, um, you know, I remember listening to, I think it was a testimony, um, you know, of, of before, before I talk about that, um, I realized that we think today that Satan wants to have us to do evil, you know, um, and that is is part of it, yes. But I believe that there is something greater than the scripture is talking about when it comes to the enemy that we are not really paying attention to, um, you know. And Paul talks. Paul Paul is used. He, he puts it this way. He said, even Satan himself is disguised as the angel of light, as an angel of light. And I, I think that it is a part of uh, spiritual warfare that we, we, we are yet to learn in the body of Christ, that the devil does not always come recommending bad and evil things. You know, I remember listening to a testimony of uh, a former warlock, um, you know, who now I, I personally speaking, I don't really, um, you know, I'm very careful, um, with revelations, you know, with, with, um, 
these um, testimonies because I, 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 the Bible said to test every spirit. So I weigh them with the word of God. And I felt that this one was very um, close to the word of God. And um, and this this warlock, he he was miraculously converted, um, you know. And and but this is after he ascended to almost the top of the kingdom of darkness, and he actually had an encounter with with the Lord. Um, but before that, he he described on numerous occasions where he he felt well well where he met um, Lucifer. And he said something about it that I I was I saw in the scriptures that I I think we re, we really need to 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 ponder on. He said to, he said when he saw Lucifer, um, he said first of all it was the most beautiful being he has ever seen in his life. Right um, when he saw him, it was the he was the most beautiful being that he's ever seen. I mean, just flawless in terms of as, as far as his appearance is concerned. He said, but there was one notable, um, nauseating um, distinction. What, one thing that really marked that encounter was that he almost could not look into his eyes because all he saw was just hate and lies so he's he's being told that he's gonna give him the word uh but yet still um he knew in his heart of hearts that it was a lie you know and um i i i, I share that because i think that we really need to understand um in fact i'm now doing a a study on um the, the, the topic counterfeit Christianity, you know, where um, the enemy has uh, invaded the, the, the church in the last days. And um, when you look at the scriptures, you would see that, uh, for instance, John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, and he said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, the, the, the amazing thing about that particular portion of scripture, um, um, he he really showed the intent of the thief. Now, one of the things we, we, we may not see in the English, but it's definitely there in the Greek, is when it said the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Um, the whole idea of that is beyond the fact that he's stealing, then whatever is left from what he has stolen, he is going to assume a religious uh, posture um, and uh, try to, to, to persuade us to just burn everything else, you know? Um, so it's almost like it gives a, an idea of someone who is given, you know, uh, proper religious instructions. So I, I say that to say that if all you think about the devil is that he is trying to get you to commit adultery and fornication and all these uh, you know, evil things. No, no, no. No, no, no. If he cannot get you to do the wrong thing, then he will try to get you to do the right thing the wrong way. Mm. Right? If he does not get you to do the wrong thing, he will try to get you to do the right thing with the wrong spirit. Right? Uh, so this is why Paul said, in me, right, that is in my flesh, it dwells no good thing. So Paul understood that I cannot even trust myself if I want to effectively serve God. Right? Uh, because he is saying, uh, Paul is saying, even when I try to do good, evil is present with me. And so it, you, you for instance, there's a perfect example of this. Uh, in the book of Acts, I believe is around uh, chapter maybe 17. I'll, I'll probably get it up. Um, around that, that part where Paul, the Bible declared that he was going through the city. And there was a, a girl, a servant girl. The Bible declared that uh, she was uh, possessed by a spirit. Now, um, you would think that someone who is possessed by an evil spirit <laughs> right will begin to strongly um you know 
stand against Paul and say, you know, what are you doing here? Right? But that's not what the girl did. The Bible declared that she began to scream with a loud voice. These men are the servants of the Most High God who come to show us the, show us the way of salvation. <laughs> and she kept saying it and repeating it. Now, I am sure that if any modern-day pastor or, or you know, or, or some modern-day pastors hear that, the first thing they do, they invite that person to the church, right, to come and preach, <laughs> right? But the Bible declared that Paul, by the gift of the discerning of spirits, that is really what I want to talk about tonight, through the gift of the discerning of spirits, we need that gift in the church because I, I, I sense very strongly uh, that the body of Christ uh, and, and not and our church, but the body of Christ is uh, a target, um, but it's not a target to, um, you know, destructive or, 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 or necessarily evil, but it's a target uh, to use what is good to wreak havoc. And so we, we need to really be sensitive and understand this is the purpose of the, the gift of the discerning of spirits. Because Paul, through the gift of the discerning of spirits, understood, he knew by revelation, that's a whole, other, a whole other topic, but he knew by revelation that although what she was saying was correct, the source was wrong. Right? And so he knew that because just because someone is saying the right thing, it does not mean they are saying the right thing with the right motives. Ah, yeah, Sela. All right. Uh, this is this is some really um, key things that we need to understand. Um, you know, and, uh, as I said, I'm preparing a message um, on on this very thing called counterfeit Christianity, where the enemy is trying to to bring into the church some something that is almost the re exact image of the truth right that is what that is what a counterfeit is <laughs> in case you don't know and you will find reference to that uh, in acts uh, i believe chapter uh, maybe chapter 8 where the bible declared that um you know philip went down to samaria and there, there was a man by the name of simon the sorcerer all right Simon the sorcerer. So you're seeing that he was, the scriptures declare he was a witch. But yet still, when the, a few verses uh, after that, it said that the people of the city, right, he, he bewitched them with sorcery. And then they said, this is what they said. They said about Simon, who was a witch, they said that he was the great power of God Almighty. So he was a witch. But because the people lacked this, the discerning of spirits, they lacked the understanding of spiritual things, they, they looked at a witch and called him a man of God. And this is how dangerous um, this, 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 what we call um, counterfeit is. That if you just look once. You ever you ever came across a good counterfeit, hundred dollars, or, or listen, we, uh, if you come across a good counterfeit, you have to test that and test that and test that before you can even pick up that that was a counterfeit. That is exactly what is going to take place in the last days, based on uh, what Paul told Timothy. All right, uh, that in the last days some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We'll look at that a little later. Doctrines of devils. That word doctrine in the Greek, it speaks of sophisticated, well-packaged teaching. So in other words, in the last days, people are going to depart from the faith because the enemy is going to bring into the church sophisticated, well-packaged teaching that will pull people away from the faith. That's scary. So when we talk, when we, it, 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 the title tonight is uh, a question 
do you know what kind what spirit you are that's what jesus asked uh his disciples he said you do not know what spirit you are of why was that because when they were going uh to jerusalem and the the disciples saw that there was resistance the he, he, when when uh, and you know when you're you, that you're walking with god effectively when you face resistance you know um you know how how deep your walk is you you many of us many of us are you know walking with god very you know we're, we're joyful full of joy now because there's no resistance but when there's a, a resistance then you would see because after they saw they saw that resistance they said do you want us to call fire down from heaven <laughs> right to consume them like elijah did and this is after jesus gave them all the teachings of blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. After all of these sermons, uh, <laughs> boy, after all of these sermons, they still wanted to call fire down from heaven and kill people. Why was that? Because of anger. Because of anger. So when when Jesus when Jesus heard that, he immediately picked up, and and this is why. I, I I I love Jesus, and this is why my my standard is Jesus, because he's seeing life from a spiritual perspective. You know, he he listened to what the disciples said, and he immediately knew that they were of a contrary spirit. Man, I man, I suggest to you tonight that any time you are out of sync with the heart of God. You you would not know what spirit you are, right? Um, and so, the gift of the discerning of spirits is so crucial because I realize that as far as your walk with God is concerned, as far as the church is concerned, as far as ministry is concerned, you I, I realize that the kingdom is is quite different to operate than the secular. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Right in the in the secular is somebody you know in get right they get in left, right? Um, but in the kingdom there's something called long suffering and and patience and and mercy, amen, amen. You know that you you have to really you, you know uh, show grace to people. So you 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 have to understand uh, you know that this. A part of your life, this kingdom is very, very spiritual. In case you didn't know, right? Um, and so he he said to his disciples, "You do not know. You're not aware of the type of spirit you're of. That's scary. That's scary. Because it tells me that it is quite easy." To start off right, but somewhere, somewhere along the line, the enemy can come in. You know, I I realize. I hope you understand that the first temptation to Eve and to Jesus was a religious one. I hope you realize that that the temptation was not necessarily bad things. Right. So to Eve, he said, what did he say? He said, you know, listen, listen, God did not really say, <laughs> right? He said, you know, he know, God knows that if you eat it, you will be like God. That's, that's what he told Eve, you know, and th that was the, the, the angle that he took. He used Eve's desire to be spiritual. Same thing he did with Jesus. If you are the son of God. Right? So it shows us that there is a really strong spirit that is operating in the church. And it is called a religious spirit. Let me tell you why that spirit is scary. 
that spirit is scary because that spirit can stand in the presence of God. I hope you know that. Right? I hope I, I really hope you know that. That spirit can stand in the presence of God as it as it relates to um, you remember um Jesus, the Bible declared that he was fasting 40 days, 40 nights. I would think that after that, no devil want to come close to him. That's what I would think. <laughs> right? But that's not the case. After fasting 40 days, 40 nights, the scripture declared that, and, and it called the name, the tempter came. Because that spirit, that spirit can go into up levels. So regardless of how high you reach, don't, don't, don't think that you are beyond the realm of temptation. It just, that's, that's, that's what that shows. That as long as you're on the earth, that spirit has access. Right? So Jesus, after fasting 40 days, 40 nights, usually if you ask us to fast, we're fasting because we want to push the enemy back. <laughs> Jesus fasted and it brought him face to face with the tempter. So I, I really want us to understand uh, some things about this, what we call, you know, anger, right? Uh, because going back to what, what the disciples asked, out of anger, they said, Lord, listen, we could call on fire now and, and consume them. He said to them, you, you're not, you don't know what spirit you have. And the question tonight is, do you know what spirit you have? Because I, I, I'm wondering, how can they spend three, three years, day and night with Jesus, and still act contrary to him? still act out of sync you know what was it that 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 made them act contrary to the one that they were following and so i building this church this church is built on revelation right um and i i i, I made some i i some i i got some on sunday about you know what is really the agenda of the enemy uh you know for this church and i'm realizing more and more as i spend time in in, in prayer and meditation i'm realizing that his agenda is to have god's people to operate in the wrong spirit i i, I hope that you don't listen i hope that you you you're, you're listening to what i'm saying right it is not about doing the right thing it's about doing the right thing with the right spirit it is not about saying the right thing it is about saying the right thing with the right spirit you do not know what spirit you are of so i, I i'm re i'm i'm you know thinking about the times where the church in the book of Acts were making certain advancements. And I realized that when the church and the kingdom was advancing to a particular momentum, I realized that different spirits manifested or, or visited the church at different times. And I'm realizing that there are different times where the the, the they are witches. I hope that you understand. Um, let me talk a little bit about this thing we call witchcraft. What we call witchcraft in our culture, um, you know, is not what the Bible calls witchcraft. I hope you know that. What we call witchcraft is more closer to necromancy. All right. That's what we call witchcraft down here or occultism. But what the Bible calls witchcraft is witchcraft is simply imposing your will on someone else. That's what witchcraft is, imposing your will on someone else, right? So it does not, when, when we talk about witchcraft in the church, we're not talk, just talking about occult, occultism. We're talking about people 
who the end who are agents based on um, whether they know it or not because they have the wrong spirit all right the enemy can use them to impose his will on others I, I hope I hope that you understand what I'm saying right and this was the case with Simon the sorcerer the Bible declared that uh, for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery right for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery and it, it, based on that we would think that you know the, the simon had the people doing um you know see me dimi as we would call it no no they the people themselves who are bewitched thinking they are thinking that simon was a legitimate minister of the gospel ah I, I hope we understand what we're going on, what, what is taking place. So what I'm really talking about is, is spiritual warfare in the church, right? That that we really need. I, I see a hand. Somebody had a hand up. Um, let me see. Did someone have their hand up? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No, I, I thought I saw a hand. Right. Any any questions or comments uh, so far? Any question, comments, observations? No, no questions, comments, observations. What you're quiet, boy. All right. All right. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Great. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hope we understand the portals that anger opens up. I hope we understand that. I hope we understand the doors that anger opens up. I hope we understand the doors bitterness opens up. I hope we understand the doors unforgiveness opens up. I hope we understand the doors gossip and slander opens up. I hope we understand the doors that these things open up into the church. Right? And I, I hope you know that as far as spiritual warfare is concerned, those uh those that I just called unforgiveness, bitterness, um, you know, strife, envy, jealousy, all those different things, those are the lowest ranking demons. That, let, meditate on that for a while. Those that I called out, right? Those are the lowest ranking demons. Amen. Amen. So if that is a, a plague in the church, it, it really shows us that the level spiritually that, the, that believers are on. Right, I, I'm preparing. How much? Me I, I can't tell you how much. <laughs> I'm sure some of you probably saying, Pastor, preparing us, us so much messages. Uh, actually, preparing one that I'm going to teach on before I teach on the the whole idea of counterfeit Christianity. I'm pre preparing one on the tongue because I, I I want us to really understand, um, you know, the 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 realms that the tongue open, both negative and positively, right? Um, and so. These are the lowest ranking demons. These are not principalities. We're not the, the gossip and, and slander and unforgiveness and anger and all these. Those are not principalities. Those are not princes, right? Um, those are what is what is called spiritual wickedness in high places. That, that's what they, they are. They, they, these are what is known as the foot soldiers in the kingdom of darkness, right? They are the ones that, that deal with um, just the average man, the, whether they know God, they don't know God. That's why you, you would find that anger and unforgiveness is both in the church and in the world, because the, the, these these demons are, uh, you know, they they are like the 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 the, the kobos, if you will. They are like you know the vultures of the king of the kingdom of darkness. They devour anything. They eat in anything, right? Uh, but the higher people go, uh, you would find that. Um, in the scriptures, real high-ranking men, 
in, in as far as um, working with God is concerned, they 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 always deal with princes, both in the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. You would see that with Moses. You would see that with Daniel. You would see that, uh, you know, with even Job. You see it with Jesus. People who are really high high level in the spirit, they they you know these uh, kobos can't really go around them. No, no, no. The the people that the higher you go is the nicer the suit Satan will will bring for you to the, the nicer the suit Satan will buy to come to to, to to try to tempt you. I hope you know that. Right? So what we see, you know, on TV, you know, the, this this portrayal of the devil with a, a, a fork and horns, that's that's for real low ranking, you know, um, almost unsafe people. But the higher you ascend into the holy of holies, the, the higher you go in your walk with God, the the, the nicer and the, the, the more sophisticated um, these attacks become. Right? So you would find that at the start of Jesus' ministry, um, you know, he was he was met with what the Bible calls the tempter. And the tempter came himself alone. No one, no, no middleman. He came to tempt him on his own. The Bible declared that after Jesus resisted the temptation, the three temptations, the Bible declared that the, 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 uh, the devil departed from him for a season. The next time he shows up, he sh shows up behind somebody that Jesus loved named Peter. All right? That so so you're seeing you're seeing how it ha how you know how these attacks are, uh, happen right so while we are looking at faces right uh, because we lack the, the spiritual knowledge we lack the know how in spiritual warfare we're looking at faces and we are clashing with each other when really and truly it is the being behind the face my God I wish listen I wish we could understand this thing. While, while we're looking at uh, our brother who has the Holy Spirit in them, right, and we're looking at what was said and 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 and, and attacking uh, each other, the the real mastermind is the person behind them, all right. Um, and so this is why Jesus can look at Peter, but look straight through Peter and say, "Get thee behind me, Satan." For you don't mind the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. So the higher you go, you have to really understand that the enemy is going to come uh, in a sophisticated way. Right? Uh, so this is what Paul was even telling, telling Timothy. Doctrines of demons. Doctrines. Highly sophisticated, well-mannered, um, suit and tie preaching. Um, or teaching, but the, the source is going to be demons. Right? So I, I, I want us to, to take out of our minds that, uh, you know, the enemy will only try to get us to do bad. No, no, no. What he wants, the higher you go, he wants to get you to do good with a bad spirit. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Right? So Jesus told his disciples, you do not know what spirit you are of. And it actually implied that the source of that request was demonic. My, I, I wish, listen, I wish I, I could just, um, you know, I wish there was a way in which we could have some kind of a, uh, you know, a setup like Jesus that he's able to just sit down and teach his disciples every day, you know, about this thing because it is so, uh, you know, it's so so deep. It's so so deep. All right. Uh, so Nikita has a question. How do I know if I'm doing the right thing with the wrong spirit? Right. So as far as spiritual warfare is concerned, it is uh, by revelation, right? Um, now the thing about um, uh. As far as the, the the spiritual warfare is concerned, you have to biblically, right, biblically, um, weigh your 
decisions, weigh your choices, weigh your words biblically, right? Um, so for instance, for instance, I, I realized um, recently, um, you know, based on scripture, I realized that there are certain adjustments I would I needed to make, right? Um, and this is what uh, this is what I'm I'm saying. Me, this is what we need to understand about the scriptures. This we have to. I, I keep saying it, right? We have to stop reading the Bible. Start reading the Bible. Start finding the word of God. Um, as far as my walk is concerned, I saw so many times where I did something with the wrong spirit, right? Um, you would know. You would know. I, I'm talking about if you genuinely walking with God and your desire um, is to really know God, right? He will reveal it to you, right? Um, so David said when he sinned with Bathsheba, he said, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Right, so if there's a right spirit, then there has there could be a wrong spirit, right? Um, and so it is something that you will know based on two things: the word of God and the spirit of God. Right? I remember saying something, whether it be to my wife, whether it, you know, some, and it was not, it may not have been bad. I remember saying things to people; it may not have been bad. Yet still, I got a sharp conviction in my heart because although I said it, although what I said was not disrespectful, my, what was in my heart was, <laughs> right? And so I realized at that moment, I said, you know, you know, it's as though the Holy Spirit saying to me, check that, right? Check that. Um, and this is the, this is the rule of the Holy Spirit. You know, I think we, we, I think we need to get past the idea of the Holy Spirit's job is just to give us goosebumps and make us shout and speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit has so much more to, 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 to his work than that, right? The greatest, and I mean the greatest work of the Holy Spirit is conviction. Conviction of sin. And when I'm, when I'm talking about conviction, I don't mean conviction that you're going to fornicate, that you're going to commit adultery. No, no, no. Because it's not where I, I, yeah, where I, I know I don't, I'm not talking to this brother, <laughs> right? I know that. I know I'm not talking to the brother, right? And uh, I'm, it, the, the Lord will get out in such a way that only me and the brother in this room, right? And as soon as I walk in and I see the brother, I turn around and walk outside to go in my car, right? As I'm walking outside to go in my car, there's a sharp conviction that that's the Holy Ghost. Right? That's the Holy Spirit. Right? So it, the Bible declared that he examines. Listen to me. Oh boy. There, there's something called exercising yourself to godliness. Godliness. If you really uh, really submitted to the Holy Spirit, you will be shocked as to what the Holy Spirit will, will, will rebuke you for. You'll be shocked. You will be shocked. And, and, and what we need to see in terms of correction, we need to see correction as a privilege. I, I want you to get that in your mind. I want you to save that on your phone. Correction is a privilege. The Bible declared that whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Mm. Mm. 
whom the Lord loves, he corrects. I was very tempted to do a, um, a meditation, you know, but I've seen you all doing such great meditations. I, I, I you know, I hold in my hand, I hold in my hand, I hold in my hand. You know, y'all, y'all doing such a great job. I don't want to come and, and you know, uh, you know, uh, you know. I, I want to make sure I keep that nice momentum that y'all have. Then, sing you. I come and do a moment, uh, um, uh, uh, um, meditation, and y'all, y'all thinking that I'm going to take over it. No, no, no. I want y'all to continue the great work that you're doing. But I was very tempted to to do a meditation, um, on on Psalm 23 when David said, "Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me." You know, and I was going to show. Uh, I was. I wanted. To, uh, I was thinking about talking ab about the comfort of correction. You know that correction. I, I, I'm sure not many of us see correction as comfortable. All right. Um, the the comfort. David found comfort in 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 God correcting him, because of course we know the rod and the staff. They was used. Uh, to guide and to in and to uh to pull out or to correct. So that same rod, you know, the, the shepherd would use to strike the the, the 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 sheep a bit there, just to make sure he keeps in line. You know, and this is this is the beauty, the uh, to a child of God of the correction of God. You know, and and so this is the work of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, you know, saying to them. You 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 don't know what spirit you're of. Because if you are if you are allowed, <laughs> if your Holy Ghost allows you to say that, then you don't know what spirit you're of. This is what he's saying. All right? Uh, he, uh, and you would see that there are times where he would check their progress as far as their walk is concerned. And he would ask, who do men say that I am? And then they would say all kind of different things that men will say. And then Peter jumped up, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then he said, wow, blessed are you, Peter. Right? Why is that? Because he is now seeing life from a revelation, from a revelation standpoint. All right? And not from just a mere flesh and blood standpoint. We cannot build the church on opinion. We cannot build our lives, spiritually speaking, on opinion and just guess and just, you know, we'll work it out as it comes. No, no, no. The church is built by revelation. Your life, your walk with God has to be built by revelation. What is revelation? Um, information received from a divine source, which is the Holy Spirit. Right? Right? Any questions? Any questions? I, I, I said I'm not going to keep you on too long tonight. Um, any questions to anyone? Curvel, good night. I, I'm so glad to see you on this evening. I, I missed you and Ronaldo. Amen. So glad to see you on. Um, any questions? To anyone? Questions or comments? So I hope that I answered your question, Nikita. Um, really and truly, uh, you know, it is... The more I realize, Solomon said something. He said, he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. <laughs> right? The more you know, is the more accountable you become for what you know. Right? Um, and so as far as um, conflict is concerned, I realize that my walk with God or my maturity in God is is known with how I deal with conflicts, with how I deal with flesh and blood, right? So there are times, there are times that I would see. Uh, this wasn't always the case all the time, um, you know. But uh, before I I started to, to devour the word of God, you know, I, I was a bit hot headed, right? A bit, just a bit, right? I was a bit, you know. Um, aggressive, right? Um, you know, uh, but as I walked with God, right? As I walked with God and I matured in God, I I believe that the Holy Spirit is doing a great work in me. In that, you know, I am no, I I I I now understand life from a spiritual standpoint, right? Um, you know, the Bible declared something about Moses. 
It said that Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. But before he met God, he, he murdered a man. But as he walked with God, the scriptures declare that he became, he, he grew into the meekest man in all the earth. Why is that? Because the more you walk with God, that, that term meekness, um, it literally means strength under control. So it gives the idea of, you know, a horse that have that has on the, the face gear, all right, that the, the, the glasses that they would call it, right? Um, and if the horse does not put on that, right, because of the power of the horse, it will run and, you know, run on people and just un un uncontrollable, right? No one will be able to tame it, no one will be able to stop it. The moment they put on those blinders on the, 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 the horse's face, the horse's eyes, all they are seeing is the finish line. So they're not seeing anything around them. They're not, be, they're not distracted by what is going on around them. All they are seeing is the finish line. So all of their strength, all of their power is focused to getting them to that finish line. That is where, that is where the term meekness come, uh, is taken from. It means strength under control. So it literally means that I now uh, use that as my fuel to get to the next level. Right? And so this is why Jesus could, could stand up and could, could be on a cross and say, Father, forgive them. Right? Strength under control. Right? Any any uh, questions or contributions? Y'all maybe talk whole night. Amen. Whole night. Right? Whole night. Any questions or comments? This this is not a conversation, Crystalline. <laughs> right? A conversation is both ways. Right? This is not a conversation. Amen. Right? This is this is like, you know, this is like a, a, a presentation. Right. Sorry, Pastor. Sorry, I'm in a but noisy place. Uh, Locking the mute. <laughs> no, but it's it's been an awesome conversation. Well, as you say, presentation. And um, what I find that stood out to me thus far is the fact that um, when you spoke about thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I never thought about it. It was a revelation that I got when you said it because uh, a rod is normally you normally think of a rod like a rod of correction right. right so it is like you know when you see if, if if you're trying to discipline a child and they see you pull out the rod it, it yeah. is it normally in in it infuses a little fear or right. whatever and i never thought about it until you said it just now then i got the revelation like wow it's really what he is saying that you know conviction actually brings a level of comfort so i'm uh, looking forward to that meditation and eh, pastor <laughs> you're not going to discourage us actually will <laughs> encourage us but um that was really really amazing to see that you know really and true i spoke about that last week i had mentioned the situation that i had and i was strongly convicted and i asked the lord the question oh gosh but everybody else getting on is mm -hmm. i can't get away with it and i felt like you know i heard the voice of the lord say to me because you are not that is not something that i would allow from you you have to be held to a higher standard yeah. so you know that is really encouraging mm -hmm. that you know that um conviction is really when god loves you when he has a plan for you when he expects better from you you know and it, it will keep us to that particular standard so pastor now you can't say it's not a conversation eh it's a, it's a conversation now. <laughs> um, yeah, it, so you had your hand up. Um, I don't know if you had a, you wanted to you wanted to make a contribution. I had my hand up because I just wanted to know if you saw the messages of persons asking you to do the meditation. Uh huh. Yeah, I saw it, but I, I you know, I, I, I saw through it. I, I didn't see it. I saw it, but I didn't. I acted as though I didn't see it. But anyway, right. So, um, <laughs> go ahead. Something else. Um, 
as we talk about that, I just want to um, put in a plug there for midweek meditation. So, uh, many of you, I know the Lord speaks to you and uh, ministers to, to you through the word, through Bible study, different things the Lord ministers to you and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if God, if God has downloaded a word in your spirit, you can always reach out because... um. We have the midweek meditation there where, um, you know, you get a chance to, how to say, when you are being fed, you might be so full of the word and you want to express what God is saying to you. And we have that platform there where you, you could create your meditation, give it to pastor, he will review, and then we can post it so i just wanted to put in a blog for midweek meditation there um yes so that's it right great um could ask a question how do you know that it is the correction you are undergoing um that's a great question now as far as well, for me um what well, there are different ways god speak to people Right, um, God speak to people different ways. Um, for me, I love, I love, I love the Word of God, um, and so you would find that for me, um, I hear the voice of the Lord the loudest. Um, I'll come to you. I'll come into you now, Isaac. I hear the voice of the Lord the loudest in the Word of God. Right. So, for instance, if I'm going through a season. If I'm I'm faced with a conflict, because I did that recently, when I'm faced with a conflict, all I have to do, I type up what does is, what is the word of God have to say about this in dealing with this, right? And sometimes I would listen to a teaching on it. Sometimes I would listen to uh, the scripture itself, right? Um, I, the Bible declares something, that you be slow to speak. Slow to speak. That's something that I'm going to teach on when I, I teach on the tongue. Um, not this week, next week, God's will. Yeah, right? We have to be slow to speak. If you, uh, I, and I will, I will share something that the Lord shared with me that I wanted to leave, uh, uh, that, I, that I want, I would share in the teaching on the tongue. Um, I remember just looking at, I think it was some fishing, some show with fish. Uh, some guys was fishing. And, you know, they caught, you know, they threw the bait and they caught and they, they reel it in. And, you know, and then I, I, something dropped to me. A fish that knows when to keep its mouth shut will never get caught. Sila. Think on that. A fish that knows when to keep its mouth shut will never get caught. That blew my mind. Right, uh, and, and so it shows that. Um, so for me, back to Kuvel, back to what I was saying, um, the the word of God. Um, so if I'm going through something, I would type in, um, you know, uh, just to see what the word has to say about it. And then when I read the scripture or I listen to it, um, you know, I would I would I would get the 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 almost as is almost as though. I can't even describe it, but there's the the, the, the soothing um, voice and presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, as far as, so, you know, and I believe at that moment, I would begin to think on my response in the situation and what happened and, and, and how am I dealing with it and am I dealing with it the right way, you know, and then I just I, I would get that that sense in my spirit that you know you need to check you need to fix this you need to check this right so the, there are different ways God will speak to you and there are different ways that you would know if you're uh, going through uh, seasons of uh, correction and one of them is conviction where you uh, you 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 just feel as though it's wrong <laughs> right you you just know that you know that you know that this is wrong what I'm saying. Um, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, whatever it is, I, I, I would know that is wrong, right? Um, you know, there are different ways. So the word of God, um, you know, the conviction of, the, of, of God, because of course that works hand in hand. God will always use the word to convict you because 
you have to be uh you have to uh live your life by truth right by a standard you know we we, ha we have this this culture now that talk about my truth and your truth and her truth and his truth no no truth is truth right so the, the, the only truth in, in this earth, the only truth in which we, we are to build our lives on is the word of God, right? And so you know when you're wrong, when it, the word says it's wrong, right? When it is, it is wrong in the scriptures. That's how you know. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of, of, of my opinion, right? If it's wrong in the word of God, it's wrong. So I, I, I so I, I, I find myself, the more mature I became in Christ, I find myself reacting less and responding more. Right? I, I, I react less. I respond more. What is the difference? Right? The difference is I, I react by uh, sometimes giving off what I get. But if I would just hold a little bit, I realize that I will give wisdom a chance. The Bible, you know, with the Bible said wisdom cries. It, it, it you know, it, it cries aloud. Wisdom is 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 almost seen as an entity in the scriptures that longs to guide us. And that is the spirit of wisdom. So the moment you 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 stand or the moment you just just hold back a little bit, right? Um, you know, when I was younger. I am very, my wife used to say, you know, I'm, I'm very gifted with words from since my unsaved days, right? I was very, I was probably born to be a preacher, uh, right? So I would know what to say, um, you know, what to say a certain way. Um, and of course, your number one tool there is sarcasm, right? I was the king of sarcasm, right? Um, but as I, as I grew in the Lord, I realized that all of that, you know, God doesn't is not uh, beneficial. So when I am faced now, I, I'm not I'm not coming here to say right that I'm all the way saved, <laughs> right? He's still working on me, amen. Right? So go ahead, Isaac, and then hopefully cover. I hope I answered your question. If not, uh, I will open the floor, you know, for more contributions so we can answer. So you know, so we can have a conversation on that particular topic, right? Isaac, go ahead because I don't want you to forget what you was going to say. Yeah, good night, everyone. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah. yeah. So, definitely, definitely, um, people tonight, a lot of things to take about, a lot of, um, a lot of notes to yeah. go back to and, and take in. Some of one or two points that stood out to me, you know, definitely was, Check back my um my notes here. The first temptation that came to Adam and Eve and Jesus was a religious spirit, and that was you know so interesting. Um, as he said, when Jesus went and he fasted and whatnot, and normally when we we go to fast, you know, we think, okay, yeah, we get we we stronger now. The state I'm going to flee. But you know, he he come he come head yeah. on, you know, and uh, Jesus definitely noticed noticed exactly what he was trying to do, and um, he was able to do the word of God in that moment, and you know, of course, Satan to flee. Um, it was so interesting. Also, hmm. is when James and John, you know, they were I'm sure in that moment they were thinking, well, they have that righteous anger, you know, yeah. built up. With the whole situation that taking place, he's like, oh, well, they could, you know, you know, treat Jesus in this way or whatnot, and they would have been like, you know, thinking that they ain't the right for getting upset and talking yeah. about calling down fire from heaven and that yeah. type of thing. And probably in another context, definitely like in 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 David's um time, yeah. you know, that probably would have worked out, right? Or if he had they had said that in the same time where um God was going to judge. Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, it would have been right. So it's so interesting how in that time and they were wrong because they didn't understand, you know, exactly what Jesus came to do, at least at this season and this time. And it wasn't time for judgment, it was really, you know, time for 
for coming to the loss and for saving the law. So they, they allow that that spirit, you know, which was supposed to be like a, a righteous one at the point in time, but it was actually the wrong spirit and that allowed them to to be deceived into thinking that they were right, you know, and feeling that way or was righteous anger in that in that moment. And you know how Jesus turned on with them. So it's definitely interesting how we could think we have the right intentions, you know, to doing certain things. You know, and we're thinking, yeah, we, we are on fire here for God, we probably the right because you know, this is 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 a right of judgment or way that we're thinking. And we could be, you know, totally deceived in that moment and operating in the wrong spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know, it I, I hope that we really understand um that this is so easy um mm -hmm. you know if you are not uh discerning or, or, or allowing the holy spirit to really work in our lives uh, and this is the purpose of the holy spirit right my, to me this is me personally right my my comfort as as i recall with david my comfort is when god speaking to me about me I, 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 I absolutely, of course it doesn't feel good, right? It don't feel good, right? But just that inner voice of God saying, you know, you need to work on this. You need to work on that, right? Allow me to work on this. Allow me to work on that, right? You need to give this to me, right? Um, you know, you need to give this, uh, anger to me. You need to give this, uh, you know, to me. Um, you know, and I, I think that we really, we really need to understand that there's a fine line. There's a fine line between life and death, right? And the the, the border of that line is religion, right? When we when we understand, I always wondered why why Jesus did not use did not call from uh, you know, to be his disciples, Pharisees and scribes. I mean, they were certainly more qualified, right? These these guys that they cho he he chose, they were rebels. They were they were you know outcasts. They were uh, you know just mere common men, right? Um, and it just should be it, it, because you know, I, I as I begin to study and I I live long enough, I realize that. As long as a religious spirit is present, life cannot get in. Right? As long as religion is present, life cannot get in. So I hope we understand that. Um, of course, you would see uh, there's a picture of that, with, of, you know, in the tomb of Lazarus. When the Bible declared that Lazarus was inside, he was dead. Right? Jesus is, is outside. Who is life, and the Bible declared that there's a stone. The English call uh, King James said a stone that is blocking Jesus from Lazarus, but it is actually the same uh, in the original language. The same word that is used for tablet, which was the same tablet that was used that Moses used to write the law, right? And so he said to Mary, because of course Jesus is a rabbi, a masterful teacher. Right, he's saying to me, he said to Mary, "Move the stone." Right, just 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 slide it away. Right, and and she she resisted and resisted and resisted uh, until he said, "You know, did not I tell you if you believe, you will see the glory of God?" And then the Bible declared that she removed the stone, and he was able to. All he could do is all he, he needed to do now was call Lazarus out. Life got in, you know, and I think that. Uh, we, we need to really be careful as believers that we don't uh, become religious, right? We don't, we give no place to the devil. We don't allow a religious spirit, um, you know, to, to really take effect in our lives because regardless of how much sermon we hear, how much prayer we pray, how, much, how strong the anointing is in the place, life cannot get in because religion is blocking it. Right, and and this is what Jesus was uh, showing his disciples because they wanted to be like Elijah, not be like Jesus, you know. Uh, and this was the same thing with the with, with the scribes and Pharisees that they were so bent on Moses, 
that they, they, they refuse to see Jesus, you know? Uh, and, and Moses turned water into blood. Jesus turned water into wine. But because of religion, they still can't see that. <laughs> you know? Uh, and it, So I, I really want us to declare war on on, on that religious spirit. Amen. Um, so anyone else? Uh, Kervel, I hope I answered your question. Um, um, you know, but uh, there, there are different ways that you would know. Um, so just let me know if you, um, if you wanted to, you know, if you understood or um, I want to make sure everyone leaves with an understanding tonight, right? Um, Hi, Pastor. Good night. Good night. Yes, I, I understand. I'm good with that explanation. Okay, great. That's awesome. Right? So, um, yeah, so 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 the beauty of the word of God. You know, I I I I pray that tonight's uh teaching would have been a blessing to us. Um and so if there's no one else, um, any last comments? Um, anyone else has uh, so I hope uh, I, I I'm not sure if anybody um noticed anything different on Sunday or when I say different, I mean, you know, uh, as far as we were praying against, um, you know, these spirits that is assigned, um, you know, to the believers. I, I hope that we realize how I believe charged um, the atmosphere was. And, you know, I definitely believe, uh, so I, I hope that we, we would have seen that and, and know that these things, this is real. That spirits are assigned uh, to 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 uh, believers. Amen. Go ahead, um, um, Samuel. All right, Pastor. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. I was just taking in. I was just taking in. Tonight, I was just taking in. No, I didn't. I didn't go down to class tonight, so see I go right. taking a little but it was it was excellent. I'm glad I came for. Nice but man. Just 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 what I think I just wonder. I know I know people here that's one that's where I don't know how 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 much listening if people is actually listen to everything as we say, right? But there's one that how pastor I'm going better this someone boy. I wonder. Die, die, Pastor Richie Climax, the way you know, like your climax on your top all day, and every, yet say so come better. This is the best sermon yet, Pastor. I was wondering how you just do it, eh? But it's on point, and just so you say Sunday, Sunday, to me, Sunday, you were sort of attacking the right spirits. Mm -hmm. Sunday was an attack on, on, on direct attack on specific spirits. I think that. Like what you said, past we had to start calling them out now. The ones that actually do any damage, as opposed to just praying, like well, you know, a personal prayer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They start targeting them. You had to start targeting them because Sunday, Sunday had a had a energy, a, a breaking energy. It was, it was, mm -hmm. it was a, a different. Now I, I've seen services with energy, but Sunday had a different energy. It was just different. It was, it, mm -hmm. it was for a different purpose. As you say, past and I think um well I I take it I take as I I say I always take everything from here, right? That's that's very 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 interesting, right? I I too past well that religious thing that's something ever since I in church I never because that's something that even in Bible school they talk about you know people just go to church and then. You start being a church goer and not a child of God. It it does happen so 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 easy, mm -hmm. and you start you know so it's so 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 easy to happen, right? It's something that there's always warn us about. So to hear you talking about now and it has really 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 affect churches because it's actually run people from the church past. Mm -hmm. That does actually keep people away from the church when they come and they realize that. Listen to me, these people are not actual believers and they are church people. So I am so happy to hear you say that pass. So I like the message, right? So thanks. Amen. 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 Right. So I, I pray that we would meditate on this, on 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 um those words of Jesus that he sent his disciples. Uh he said, You do not know what spirit you are. You know, so the question is, do we know what spirit we are? 
right? Um, the, the Bible declares something so powerful. It says that um, as far as uh, the Spirit of God is concerned, you know, we really, Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit, right? Um, and so an a apple tree, regardless of what they do, it cannot produce avocados, right? Um, and so it, it, you by their fruit, you will know them, you know? And so we need to really understand that um, and really take serious, um, you know, this whole, this whole, what Paul calls the fruit of the spirit. Notice he said fruit, single, singular, fruit, not fruits, fruit. He called, he called different things, love, joy, peace, long suffering, all of that. He called all of that, but then he, he calls it a fruit of the spirit. So it is a fruit with multiple pegs and not multiple fruits. Right, so you can if you, you either have the fruit of the spirit or you don't, and what happens is that if you have the fruit of the spirit, then the peg you you know you are the Holy Spirit now will grow out the pegs of that fruit of the spirit. Amen. And so this is the purpose of um, conflict. This is the purpose of people that God will use to test you. This is the, the purpose of all of that that life throws at you. It is to grow out the fruit. That's that's the purpose of it, right? So if all we see these things as is just this brother attacking me, you know, this sister need to need to take her time, right? You know, and all these different <laughs> these different petty things that we 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 do in the name of Christ, right? If we all we see as people then we are missing the whole point of what God is trying to do, right? God will use people to perfect people, right? He, the, the, you know, today, you know, I will close with this. Today, um, you know, I had a situation where, you know, I was, something happened on work, you know, and it really, you know, you know, customers, how you customers can be. <laughs> Uh, you know, they say customers always right. And, you know, and one, and, you know, something happened and, and today, uh, and it really, really tried me. It tried me. Um, you know, I try, I listen, I, was, I went to the car and I hot, I boiling, you know, I, I say, you know, I, I, I held my piece and I went to the car and I just bubbling, right? Um, you know, and I, I just rock in and, you know, I just, I, I put on the scriptures. And while I'm going down the road, you know, and just allowing the, the scriptures. Now, mind you, I did not want to put on no scriptures. <laughs> right? The scriptures is the last thing I want to put on. Right? If 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 the situation caught me uh, uh, about the 10, 11 years ago, right? Is 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 all kind of ungodly men are putting on, right? But so just the mere fact that I put on scriptures <laughs> is a good sign, you know. And then I, I, I you know, I begin to really, uh, I begin to ponder on the word of God. And in almost seconds, how I felt disappeared. So I, it showed me that these things are more than just attitudes. These things are spirits. I will leave you there. I, I will leave that right there. These things, anger, rage, these are spirits. Right? I, listen, I didn't pray. I didn't do any. All I did was put on the word of God, listen to the word of God. And what whatever scripture that I that that you know I could quote, I quoted it. I you know, there's something I like to play, um, you know, uh, the promises of God. So I would I would I would put on that on YouTube, and it would be like eight hours of just uh, you know, different scriptures from all over this, from all over the Bible. Just you know, just reading, and out of nowhere, how how I felt, the what I wanted to do, the the email I wanted to send, right? You know, you know, the calls I wanted to make, all of that disappeared. So it showed me that that these this is what I mean. This the this is these are spirits. 
right? Uh, and so I pray that we understand that we have the solution, um, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Let the church say amen. Um, amen. You know, I realize that um, it, I, I can not just, I can show my work with God by how I treat people. You know that, right? And I realized that uh, there are sometimes people would ask me, are you a Christian by chance? They don't know, you know, that, you know, what I do or anything like that. But, you know, customers ask me that already, you know, and um, and it is just by the scriptures that declared by, by our fruit, we will be known, you know. Um, so I will end there. I, I carried you a whole seven minutes beyond the time. So I'll end there for this evening. Um, I would like to invite um, at this time maybe um, anyone who can close us in prayer or the chairperson. I think Brother Dwight was chairing as well. Um, he could I can hand back over to, to Brother Dwight and, and he will uh, close the service. Thank you so much um, for taking part in our discussion tonight. Remember, next week, God's willing, we are in Bible study tour. We will be by Brother Dexter. The link, the 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 location and will be shared uh, later on in the week. Amen? Uh, so God bless you this evening as I have. Hi, good night again, everyone. You know, every Thursday, I look forward for this prayer session because it has been lit. And tonight was an eye-opener, even for me, because it had me searching myself because I have a serious problem in the sense that I have a real low tolerance level for people who you call hypocrites. You see the people, people who just smile and stuff like that. And tonight, it was an eye opener for me. It's not for me to judge. That judging is for the Almighty to judge. So it, so it had me really sit down and meditating on the world tonight. Because just the other day, I was having a discussion with my wife home here, and I was saying, you know, we really saved by grace, you know, because it was a time like Ananias and his wife and stuff. When he tell you lie in the church and he fall along, plenty of us would have fallen along in the church a long time, you know. So I was just meditating on what Pastor said tonight. It was a real eye opener. So, so Pastor, I must say thanks again for the word tonight. So as yes. we meditate on what Pastor really bring tonight, I hope it will be an eye opener for each and every one of us. And that the God will continue to strengthen Pastor and his family and each and every one of us here, that we will always be here under God's grace, that we will be binding together closer with, the, with these kind of words that Pastor bring here tonight. So, oh dear Heavenly Father God, I just want to thank you tonight for this night that you make, oh God, Lord Father, that for each and every one of us who are gathered here in your midst, oh God. Lord, who are here tonight, O oh God, were here for you, just for this time and this season, Almighty oh God, to hear this word, O oh God, Lord Father, to help us, dear God, to really reflect on our life, to help us to get our acts together and our minds and hearts open to the will of you, O oh God, Lord Father. And Lord Father, I pray that you continue to dispatch your words of wisdom they go to your people, dear God, as a use our dear pastor, dear God, to enlighten us, O oh God. Lord Father, I pray, dear God, as we go our separate ways tonight, O oh God, that we'll be able to meditate on what was brought to the table tonight, O oh God, Lord Father. Lord Father, continue to strengthen us, O oh God. Dear God, I pray that you continue to guide our footstep in the straight and narrow path, that you will keep us on that rock, O oh God, that rock that you provide, O oh God, Lord Father. And Lord Father, as we meditate on your word, dear God, Lord Father, that you will continue to bring inspiration to us, O God, encouragement, O mighty God. Lord Father, I pray, dear God, that you will dispatch your angel, dear God, to take charge over our life and everything that concerns us, O God, Lord Father, that you're going to continue to protect us in every step that you make, O God, every moment, O God, Lord Father. And Lord Father, I pray, dear God, that you will continue to bind us together with cords of love. Bind us together with cause that can never be broken, O oh God, Lord Father, that you will be able to use us, O oh God, Lord Father, to spread your word, dear mighty God. In no other name I pray, but in Jesus' name. Amen.